Ask Iman. Ask Iman is brought to you by Wahid Invest and Masterclass Properties. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back after the break. For those who have just joined with us, you're watching Ask Iman, a live interactive Q&A program in conversation with Sheikh Khidr Hussain, who is a respected Imam and Khatib based in London and a graduate of Al-Azhar University specializing in fiqh. If you've got any questions, please feel free to contact us using the details at the bottom of your TV screen. But perhaps for your reference, the details, the telephone number to talk to us in the studio, it's 0203 515 0769. Alternatively, should you wish to text us via WhatsApp, then it's 0742239833. You can also email us at ask at imanchannel.tv or you can leave us a Facebook message or inbox us through the Facebook. Inshallah, we look forward to answering your questions. Now, Sheikh, I'd like to, before I move on to the caller and other email, just a little bit of continuation from our uh, previous segment discussion. Uh, especially when we talked about the deceased or especially talked about the culture and tradition. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes we do see it's very, very challenging not to upset the family mm -hmm. because perhaps our parents would be following a particular tradition or a trend and they would argue about it's been going on for generation. And then the younger generation, uh, through their classes, through their understanding, mm -hmm. through the scholars they've got interacted with, they have got a different view, a different understanding. Now, sometimes it does lead to a little bit of complication in the family. Mm -hmm. Now, as a, child, as a child, as children, we know we have to be obedient to our parents. Now, how do we convey the correct message at the same time maintaining the adab that Islam has given us uh, to our elders, especially to our parents? I think in such situation, we have to approach it with uh, wisdom and knowledge, especially when it comes to matters uh, that go against our religion. Mm. If we're speaking to our own family members or people that we are concerned about, uh, one of the ways to approach it is we have to be people of wisdom. We can't have a harsh approach. We can't become mutashaddid to the point that we are telling them off because sometimes that approach doesn't work we have to tell them what is right and what is wrong no doubt because there is no obedience to mankind by disobeying Allah this is a well-known statement mm -hmm. that there is no obedience to mankind by disobeying Allah priority is my creator not the creation because if you try to please the creation you will never be able to please the creation but if you want to please your creator that is an easy thing to do because you make him your priority over the creation when it comes to matters especially those customs that are contrary to the teaching of the prophet Islam, and they have become so widespread in society that people think it is part of the religion those things take time to bring change and we have to understand this that overnight you can't bring change to all of those things you have to use your wisdom you have to use your knowledge you have to use your experience to bring about those changes mm. uh, and all those problems in society that we see where people think they're part it's part of our religion when in reality it's far from the religion and the religion is free uh, but uh, from such uh, immorality and indecency but then again if you look at it from the other perspective the elder generation of people who are very much uh, following the tradition they would say these days the Islam is being made very easy or everything is made very easy and simpler or people have different understandings then how do you respond to that the religion itself in reality is easy is the moment we don't understand the religion mm. we make it difficult for ourselves Rasul he says to one of his companions nafsahu. it is not correct for a believer to disgrace himself. The companion says, nafsahu ya Rasulullah. Mm -hmm. And how does a person disgrace, dishonor himself? He says, uh, That they expose themselves to a task or a role or responsibility where very soon they find that they can't bear it. They can't endure the difficulty. Often mm -hmm. we find ourselves in such a situation. The religion is easy. Why do we bring about these problems to ourselves to the point we find ourselves in a complicated, confused and a difficult situation? 
So that shouldn't be the case. The case should be that we follow the sunnah as we began in the beginning of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even when it comes to the actions, if it's just a small amount and it's not a great amount, like the companion, he mm. came to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said, Ya Rasulullah, if I just pray my five times prayer and he's just said a, 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 a few amount of good deeds, will that take me to Jannah? Mm. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, that is sufficient for you. Why is it that we want to do things to attain the closeness of Allah in Those reality, things that hasn't been legislated by Allah, it hasn't, it doesn't have the stamp of mm, approval by mm. Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. khair for clarifying, and that's why whenever we're in doubt, we should get in touch with the qualified scholars. We should understand in the correct context, taking out our time, and that's why Islam puts a lot of focus and importance on acquiring education, on understanding, and then that's when it, it becomes easier for us to implement in our daily day-to-day -day life. Inshallah, we'll take um, advice here from the show, from the Sheikh. Inshallah, we'll try and implement it. And if there is any question, please feel free to ask us either by email or you can text us or you can telephone us directly into the studio and the details are appearing at the bottom of your TV screen. Now, Sheikh, there is a caller who is um, off air, didn't want to ask uh, on air. Um, uh, the question was from a sister. She wanted to understand about leaving the Salah because there is a hadith uh, when it comes to leaving the Salah that uh, one can come out of Islam or one might have disbelieved in Islam. Now, how do you explain it in correct context? What does the actually the hadith talk about when it comes to leaving the Salah? The concept is known as Tariq as Salah, the one who abandons Salah. Uh, there is a difference uh, in terms of uh, whether the person is, is within the folds of Islam or not. And there is a scholarly difference of opinion, and the scholars have their difference. Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, he was quite strict in regards to this. Imam al Shafi, on the other hand, he was quite relaxed in the opinion. Mm. Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, his opinion was that the person who intentionally abandons Salah, they have left the fold of the religion. And he brings forward some evidences, the well known narration, Bain al Abdi wal Kufri Tarku Salah. The dividing line between a believer and a disbeliever is the negligence of Salah. Another hadith, man taraka salatan maktubatan muta'ammidan, the person mm. who intentionally abandons salah, faqad kafara, that person has done an act of kufr. Many of the scholars, they took these narrations literally and they said that this person have, has left the fold of Islam. On the other hand, many of the scholars, they said, well, what if that person repents? Because that person, out of laziness, out of negligence, ignorance. perhaps they mm. ignorance, they haven't prayed. But deep down, Tasdiqan bil qalb in their heart, they believe in Allah and they follow the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi But this is one of their weaknesses. So they have Iman within them, but when it comes to their portrayal of their inner belief, there seems to be some deficiency. So we can't call them disbelievers. So the more correct opinion, it seems, in regards to this matter, as Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah says, Kufur duna kafir. It's an act of disbelief, but it doesn't take a person out of the fold of the religion mm -hmm. because Deep down, they have absolute conviction. They believe in Allah and they believe Perfect. in the Rasul. However, if a person says salah is not important, I don't need to pray, what is salah? And totally uh, dishonest salah, then it really wants the question in terms of their belief. Um, just to clarify, even though whatever the stance is, are we as human beings allowed to label someone that this is he and she is not Muslim or he and she is Muslim? Is it upon us? Because sometimes we do see people calling names. Mm. So how do we deal with that? I think it's important we understand we're Ahlul Da'wah. We are people that uh, give nasihat to other people. Uh, we should call them mm. towards, if they don't pray, we bring them towards the masjid. Uh, Imam Abu Hamid, uh, he was uh, once asked, ما حكم تارك الصلاة? What is the ruling regarding a man who abandons salah? He says, حكمه أن تأخذه معك إلى المسجد. The ruling is you hold him by his hand and you take him to the masjid. masjid. This is the job of the people of da'wah. It is not our job to say you're going to Jahannam and you're going uh, to the hellfire. That is ahkamul hakimin. Allah Jalla wa Ala, he, he will decide so. because that mm. person might repent and they might be a better person than you in the long run. Wallahu a'lam, Allah knows inshallah. best. Um, Sheikh, uh, our time is up. The hour is up. It runs out so quickly. And with the scarcity of time, we are unable to take any more phone calls or t messages or emails. Concluding remark in 30 seconds for tonight. We began by speaking about the importance of the sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi wa alihi wa sallam. Those of us who are living in Western countries, it is absolutely important that we uphold and we hold on to the sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi wa alihi wa sallam, which is actually the answer to every aspect of our life, all of our questions, all of our problems. The sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi wa sallam, his way of life, his tradition, his teachings are actually 
the key towards providing solution for each one of us in every aspect of our life. The sunnah just uh, does not mean that the sunnah is in my clothes, that I wear white clothing and I wear things that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wore. But the sunnah is that which needs to be apparent in my speech, my behavior, my manners, every aspect of my life. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh, and once again, thank you very much to the program, and we hope to see you again, inshallah, in Askiman. Jazakallah khair. With this, my dear viewers, we have come to the conclusion of our tonight's discussion. As I, as Sheikh have correctly said, that first, acquiring knowledge and education is important, and secondly, we should always abstain from anything that is against the Islam. Till we meet again, it's me, Qamar al-Islam, taking your leave. Until next time, from Ask Iman, Subhanakallah, Muhammadik, Nashadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfuraka wa natubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Zakallah khair, Sheikh. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Ask Iman is brought to you by Wahid Invest and Masterclass Properties.